Hello dear friends, welcome to another video of the Never Do Through the GUI What You Can Do Through the CLI channel. I am Vagelis Prokopiu and you are watching Rust Traits Are Super Powerful. I wanted to talk a, a little bit about uh, Rust Traits for some time now because uh, uh, I myself have seen some things and learned some things that uh, indeed they made a, a great impression on me and I would like to share some of this information with you through this video and uh, we are going to, to talk about the power that Rust traits can provide us now what I mean with power you will see in a second I have a, an empty Rust project here and we will uh, write some code here together and you will understand what I want to show you. The general idea is that traits allows us, can allow, allow us to extend existing code uh, with uh, new functionalities that we can provide, that we can implement. And I want to, to show this with an example, but of course this point is not uh, um, very powerful in itself, but you will see in a minute where the power lies. So I will start this video by implementing, uh, creating a trait that we will uh, call, for example, Rust Lover, and this uh, trait will have a function which we will call show some love which will have the self as an argument and it will just uh, print let's say that it will print I love Rust Okay, this is our custom trait. As we know, we can implement this trait on uh, structs and uh, provide the functionality to those structs, to those data types that we're going to implement this trait for. But now comes the, the very nice part, uh, and it is that we can implement our traits on existing um, code uh, like third-party libraries and even the Rust standard library. So with our custom traits and our custom code we can very easily extend even the standard library or third-party code without touching that code, without interfering with that code at all. And now I'm going to, sh to show you what exactly uh, I mean. For example, let's start implementing, let's implement the Rust Lover for, let's say, something from the standard library for, for bool. As you know, bool is a primitive type, type of Rust. Let's go, if we come here to the Rust docs and we search for bool, we will see that bool is a primitive type. Yet we are able to implement our trait for this primitive type and we will uh, use it a little later. Basically let's use it uh, now. We will say we will uh, create a variable that we will call truth and it will be of type bool and it will equal to true and now we can say truth show some love this is how we can use our custom functionality let's try to run this program Uh, use create rust lover no rust lover in the root implement l rust lover for boolean oh sorry what was that 
we didn't want that. Let's run the program. Okay. As you can see, it compiled, it ran, and it print the line from our trade. I love Rust. If we come here, this is the functionality that our trade provides. And we implemented it for a primitive uh, type of the standard library. But let's keep going for a little more and let's say that we want to implement our trade on a standard library uh, struct. So let's use for example uh, a hash map. So we will say that we want from the standard library, from the collections, we want uh, to use the hash map. Okay. And we will come here and we will say that uh, first of, of all we will implement the Rust Lover trade for the hash map. And let's give it the types for example uh, yes so we implement the rust lover for the standard library uh, struct hash map and then we can uh, create a dictionary and say that let dict of type uh, hash map string string is equal to hash map new we created this new uh, hash map and now we can say dict where is the d dict show some love dict let's try run this program again it created for us this this code that we don't want I don't know why this happens JetBrains usually doesn't do such mistakes so let's rerun and as you can see, we got two print line statements. I love Rust here. And they are coming one from the Boolean primitive type for which we implemented the Rust Lover trade. And one from the hash map. Again, the struct from the standard library for which we implemented the Rust Lover trade. <sighs> as I said, uh, it's quite. Um, I was uh, amazed when I found about this because this is something that we are not used to from other languages. For example, if we compare this behavior to the C++ language which dominates um, the field that Rust aims at, as you can understand, we cannot uh, we cannot alter the standard library unless we go uh, and edit the code or we cannot uh, alter a third party code a library let's say a third party library unless we go into the library and change the code the, def the function signatures the definitions etc etc which of course we should not do because that will create a custom version and it, it will be overridden as soon as there's a library update and it creates a problem but as you can see here in Rust this is in my mind mind-blowing of course I'm not the the most experienced programmer of all time or I'm not let's say a Rust expert, but when uh, I found about this it was mind-blowing for me uh, the ease with which we can extend existing code extend third-party libraries without even touching that code well, 
I hope you find uh, this video interesting. It was very interesting for me. Uh, this is all the info that I wanted to share with you in this video. If you indeed like the video, you can comment, like and subscribe by clicking the penguin that you will see on the screen. Thank you for watching and have a great day.